So in the last video, we got our recoil set up where everything is procedurally generated and randomized a bit. But the problem is we have kind of all of our interpolation for it being run on tick. So we're constantly doing interpolations between the two. What I want to do is do some basic checking so that way it's not constantly calling these two functions on tick. So if we're not shooting, we don't need it to run. We only need it to run when we start firing and when we stop firing once her recoil transform has completely matched back down to an empty transform. So we're going to have some simple checks here. So let's try it. So if recoil transform dot equals an empty F transform. So F transform, or sorry, uh, does not equal an empty transform. Or what was it? Final, yeah, final recoil transform dot equals a empty transform. So F transform, we're going to call the constructor. And I'm just going to, for now, move these in there, as well as print out a log. Let's do uh, interpolating, so that way we can see it. So if we are, if our recoil transform is not equal to zero, meaning it's still interpolating, or interpolating back down to zero, or our final recoil transform is equal to an empty transform, which this is incorrect, we want to check it, so if both of these are not equal to an empty transform, then we want to run it. it, means something is happening where we want to interpolate. If nothing is happening, like both of these, for example, are an empty transform, then we want nothing to run at all. We don't need it to interpolate, period. So let's try it. Well, it's kind of neat. What the world broke from the last time to this? Let me comment these out and see. Okay. Let's try and commenting that out. And that put why in the world? What about this one? That is really bizarre. Okay, let me actually check that. I'm almost questioning. Let's see. These should be adding onto the existing. See, here's our recoil. Add to existing, add to existing. Okay, that's fine. That makes no sense why that would be occurring unless, for whatever reason, that is not necessarily a zeroed out transform. I'm going to, because we're calling that once, I'm going to copy these two function calls. And I will simply move them into here. And we don't really have a delta second, so let's just do 0. Point, we'll just do 1.0. Whoops. Like so. Into our begin play. And with any luck, that will get rid of that initial issue. No, it does not. What the heck? Okay, so all I did was I restarted my project, just closed it and reopened it, and well, with a recompile, and that seemed to fix it. I don't know what the issue was, but anyways, it's just one of those random Unreal Engine bugs. Anyway, so now when we shoot, I'll shoot once. As you can see, it spams interpolating. Then I can click on something to turn out something else in the log, and as you can see, it has already stopped. So now it's only going to be running the interpolation code while it's recoiling like this, and while we wait for it to settle. I'm going to just try to spam it, press F8, click, and you can saw while the recall was settling, it was still right here, it was still spamming the interpolation until it was finished. So we have made this a bit more efficient, and honestly, I would almost consider having a separate recall animation for the third person, so that way all you do for the third person view anyways, like I don't mean third person as in third and first person. The um, When you're looking at another client, for example, I would consider instead of having theirs being procedurally generated like this, instead having theirs be a simple animation that you animate in something like Blender and just make it additive. 
So that way you don't have to run, you know, even though it's not a whole lot, you don't have to run this logic on top of the animation graph just for other clients when really all you have to do is we can move that inside of here with our locally controlled check and the code will only run for ourselves like so. So that will clean all that up and that will make it fairly efficient because it's only running on our own client. So it's only running on our single, just our own instance. We don't have to worry about if we have a hundred players, we don't have to worry about this stuff running instead. Well, because we're not going to notice these things at all with other clients, we're not going to be able to just visually see them. And we could see this visually and that would take care of the recall for the clients. But like I said, if you have 80, plus players, you might have some issues in regards to performance, potentially if something like this is running on nearly all their clients at the same time. So instead you could play a simple animation for other clients while their own client, they will see the generate or the procedural recoil. So that's going to be all for this video. And I think this is actually everything for the series. So we are on video, what? This will be video number 30. So I'll probably have this one be available for everybody just as a little final teaser. But that's going to be all for the series. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something because it is very useful. Because honestly, the only thing you really need are a simple idle pose, just so of you holding the rifle at the hip, a simple reload animation, and that's it. Aim down sights, recoil, sway. All that kind of stuff is handled for you. So that's going to be all for this video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below, where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for patrons, as well as you get early access to all of the videos in this series way before anyone else does. And you can get that for just $1. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So I'll see you in the next video.